Okay, speaking of uh, happy pills, substance use is another highly prevalent form of disorder. This notion of dependence is characterized by withdrawal symptoms. If you uh, don't get to get the medic to get the substance, the drug, uh, craving, so constant feeling like you need to take it, and then also this kind of tolerance, so that uh, you need to take more and more to get the same kinds of effects. Those symptoms characterize a state of dependence on a substance. Many of us are dependent on things like coffee and caffeine. That's not considered a disorder because in many ways it's beneficial. It, it improves actually, you know, a lot of health studies are showing that it improves health, may improve uh, uh, cognitive function. If there aren't those kind of dysfunction and distress uh, characteristics, then it's not considered a disorder per se. But it is very prevalent and it is a major source of death. Uh, so drug and alcohol deaths in the United States in a given year is like 100,000. And then tobacco, even though the use of tobacco is, is on the decline, still a huge number of deaths associated with that. And for uh, addiction treatment, it's very difficult. A lot of times the relapse rate remains persistently high, you know, in this kind of 40 to 60 percent range. So it is a very difficult uh, pattern to treat. There's this idea that you know, once you start, it does change your brain uh, networks, although perhaps not as much as, as we uh, are led to believe. Then, of course, you have that predisposition in the first place. In the last few years, there's been a broader recognition of the kind of huge opioid crisis uh, and uh, really very bad behavior on the part of drug companies in, in fueling this. Um, and so this is a really major public health issue that is affecting, you know, huge number of people and is, is a real travesty. Bipolar disorder uh, is characterized by uh, manic phases uh, alternating with depressive phases. It's very widely known in the popular uh, media, et cetera, uh, this kind of alternation between these different phases. Um, there is this interesting term in terms of this hypomania, um, which is a lower level of mania that can produce highly creative work uh, and many people say, you know, it's almost worth the, all the horrible things about this disorder uh, for how amazing this uh, kind of hypomania is. If it's, if it's super high level of, of, of mania, uh, then it's kind of un, uncontrolled and, and not uh, very productive. But there is this zone here in, in people with this disorder where they're just in this really uh, great uh, state where they can get a lot of highly creative uh, productive work done. There are many famous people who are known for their creativity and, and productivity. So uh, Kanye West, Carrie Fisher, Mel Gibson, Demi Lovato, Kurt Cobain, Frank Sinatra, Vivian Lee, Winston Churchill are all people who uh, have uh, been one way or another diagnosed with bipolar disorder. But it really is, it is a disorder. It does cause distress, even though there are all these kind of famous people associated with it. And some people might kind of glamorize it in that way. Um, the depressive aspects are really tough and it does have a high level of suicide rate um, and very, very challenging. So uh, yeah, it's important not to kind of glamorize these things, even though there are these kind of cases where it might actually lead to kind of uh, high levels of, of creativity and productivity. Eating disorders are characterized by this kind of wrestling with control, control over eating behavior uh, all of us wrestle with this to some extent. Uh, there's so many, you know, delicious high calorie options out there. And if your metabolism is not one that, you know, processes that stuff very uh, efficiently and, and keeps your weight down, then uh, you you really are wrestling with body weight in, in kind of control over uh, eating. Anorexia and bulimia, again, widely known, uh, are cases where you have this kind of more extreme uh, issues of control over these, these eating behavior. So anorexia is characterized by kind of an extreme form of conscientiousness and ability, sort of a super normal ability to actually regulate food intake to the point that people become really, really kind of dangerously undernourished, malnourished, you know, is associated, especially with women with this kind of prevalent uh, media reinforced body image uh, issues, actual scientific studies show that it, it is uh, really associated with an increase in this kind of frontal control networks. There's also a, a high level of comorbidity with obsessive compulsive disorder, 
consistent with this kind of increased kind of control system in this disorder. Bulimia is kind of this situation which is not as quite a strong level of control where uh, you essentially have this periods of loss of control and engage in binging behavior, but then kind of try to regain control by purging, throwing up, uh, getting rid of what you've eaten. Um, and so that kind of more, uh, you know, back and forth struggle uh, with eating behavior. And so these are major disorders affecting a lot of people and can really cause significant health impacts.